Hi guys, it's Ben here. How are you all doing? Liverpool have just lost to Dortmund by three goals to one in the first of three games on this US tour. It's the first game Liverpool have uh, been defeated in in this preseason campaign. They've obviously played four domestic games before this and looked okay, uh, winning three, drawing one. Uh, and they were going quite well on this one, leading one and a half time, but then obviously the changes started to happen. Uh, Liverpool lost all their momentum. Their defence uh, was significantly weakened by the substitutions and they completely fell apart. Um, Christian Pulisic of Dortmund the man that Klopp's been talking about as of late um, and sort of someone that we've been linked with a little bit. Um, I think those links will intensify in the next year or two and we may, may well end up with the player uh, if Klopp stays with us for, you know, as, as long as we hope. Pulisic may well be part of his long-term vision but at the moment, as Klopp said, um, he's very much a Dortmund player and he's developing well there and we saw today firsthand exactly what he, he can do. He scored the penalty after winning it, it will be in rather controversial fashion and then he scored the, the second which was a lovely, lovely finish right in the bottom corner which Karras didn't even die for and the third... Um, he's involved again and Karis doesn't flatter himself and again I mean I glanced at Twitter um, to see what they're saying about Karis yeah I, I don't even know if being a second choice is, is feasible for him right now um, I mean can you imagine what the, the conversation would have been like if we hadn't signed Alisson yet and Karis had done this it would be murder there's absolutely no competition for number uh, number one at Liverpool now in goal. Um, Mignolet's been linked with a move to Barcelona, which is bizarre. Um, and Ward's gone. I mean, it looks like Karras is going to be our number two, so that's going to be good fun. But anyway, Liverpool disappointing today, um, having got the 1 0 lead through Virgil van Dijk, who was a colossus at the back in that first half. Um, I thought he. Fabinho, um, I thought Robertson was great, his delivery was great all, after, all afternoon over there, evening here. Um, Liverpool did okay on the whole, uh, defensively looked okay, first half weren't troubled. Going forward, it wasn't great. Um, Origi, I know I keep mentioning him, him, but he just seemed to can't even find a teammate at the moment. He's, he cannot seem to pass the ball to a man wearing the same colour as him. It is just literally that simple, and he's not a goal threat either. Um, Solanke, you play the second half, you can kind of issue the same sort of criticism at. You just don't see how he scores 10 goals in a football league season for Liverpool Football Club at the moment. I know he's young, I know he needs a run of games and whatever, I know this system maybe doesn't quite suit him, um, and I know you know, he wasn't necessarily Klopp signing, you know, but yeah, it's not promising for either of those guys. Origi, you'd think, is definitely going to go. Solanke needed a good um, pre-season, you could still have one but hasn't got off to the best start. Uh, he just doesn't look like scoring. He had a, a pretty easy chance from a header second half that he put wide from less than six yards out, so that's not ideal for him. Um, but yeah, it's defensively where the, the main issues were. Obviously, with Clavin and Phillips on the pitch, it's not going to be as solid as Van Dijk and Matip, who got injured again. He limped off in the first half quite early on. I'm not sure what the prognosis is on that. Um, you'd hope that it wasn't another long-term Absence, not because I like Matip particularly, but because the strength and depth suddenly, once you take him out, isn't there, especially with Lovren maybe coming back a bit late uh, from the World Cup. You've got Van Dijk and Clavin there as your best two centre-backs, and Gomez as cover, who hasn't played a lot of games as centre-back himself, and then you're looking at the likes of Nat Phillips. So lots of people have been calling for a new centre-back. I mean, if, it, if, if we're going to replace John Matip like for like, then I'm absolutely all for it because I don't, I'm not that fussed about him anyway um, and I need someone that's going to be actually, actually fit all the time uh, when called upon because Lauren picks up the odd nick as well, uh, the odd niggle and yeah, Van Dijk, um, Matip rather, just isn't always there to fill in when needed and again he's hobbled off today, I'm just not sure what he's made of um, which is frustrating but anyway, Gomez came on and played okay um, and yeah, it wasn't as I say, it wasn't until late on the second half when it's Clavin and Phillips there who, so to say, weren't the most convincing partnership uh, that Liverpool really started to fall apart without the help of the goalkeeper, obviously. Uh, but positives to take um, again: Cater and Sturridge. I thought played really, really well. Daniel Sturridge um, again dropping deeper at times, um, creating an awful lot. Created the perfect chance for Shea Ojo, who really should have done better. I mean, the lack of composure that Ojo showed. Um, I think just kind of confirms the gulf between what we've got, um, you know, what what we've got from our inside forwards or our wingers or, or just our, our just attackers compared to the likes of him. I mean, we all want to see youngsters come through and succeed in this Liverpool side and show that there is a pathway from the academy through to the first team. But the gulf in quality is huge, which is exactly why Jordan Shakiri's here. And I know people um, will talk about the fact that uh, maybe he's lazy and maybe. 
do, do we need to spend money on someone like him when there when there is options coming in through the academy? And Harry Wilson maybe is a better example because he did take his chance in pre-season. He scored a couple of goals um, and he was great in the championship last season. So he kind of felt he has proved himself a little bit. Um, but, you know, Shakiri is a sure thing. Um, these guys aren't at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so that's where we are with that. Shea Ojo really should make it 2-0 and then Liverpool will probably go on to, well, they do go on to win the game if that does happen. Um, but it was great creativity from Daniel Sturridge. Naby Keita showed things that I've not even seen him do yet. We, we know he can win the ball hard at the pitch and play a pass, but he was great in, he was great in little intricate moments when he had like two or three players to beat um, on the touchline. He, he, he found ways to get around them. He just makes something out of nothing. He really does look like a complete footballer. He, he's got the, the skill and the close ball control of Coutinho, but he's also got the, the burst of pace, uh, the tackling. Um, he can shoot. Uh, obviously, Coutinho can as well, but I'm just talking about how complete a player is. Navicata looks like an absolute star. Um, and yes, I know it's the second half when he comes on when Liverpool fall apart, but those two things, as far as I'm concerned, were not... Um, correlated uh, too much so it's disappointing for Liverpool obviously um, we, we tried out a couple of different things in midfield again Milner again playing slightly deeper and we really did miss Fabinho second half um, Vinaldum obviously wasn't there either so we didn't have a natural number six Cater was pushing forward quite a lot um, not neglecting his defensive duty, but I mean, he's obviously instructed to, to push forward because that's where his the bulk of his quality lies. Milner just looked a bit lonely and overran there in midfield second half and allowed Pulisic to make runs at him um, and make him look, you know, quite ordinary at times. So, tactically, it wasn't perfect second half. Um, obviously, the absentees play a big factor. But I mean, what were your thoughts? Is there anything that really, really concerns you? For me, it's the strength and depth in attacking areas still... Um, is an issue in so much as Origi and Solanke aren't doing anything because obviously last season we did rely on Solanke off the bench quite a lot and I imagine you know that may still be the case this season obviously Sturridge is there but can you rely on his fitness um, I don't know uh, we don't know what Klopp's plans are with Shaqiri maybe he could play off the front or as a number 10 um, but you know even from a wide men point of view unless you played Alana there sometimes maybe we are still a body short um, I think we're okay I, I still think we this squad as it is can challenge for the title um, lots of you will disagree of course because you, you're obsessed with Nabil Fakir um, the, the only reason I'm not obsessed with Nabil Fakir is because I've trained myself now to think that we're not signing him even though I've been saying that it, we we will um, I just don't know and I don't want to answer all the questions about Nabil Fakir anymore because it's getting really boring don't you think the Nabil Fakir silo is getting really boring um, so let's forget about that let's just concentrate on the times ahead the squad we do have which will be vastly improved by the time we play Man United in the third game of this tour when um, when Salah and Mane are here uh, Shakiri. Um, not quite Alisson I think he's uh, in, in a camp in France and obviously not um, not not the England lads um, and not for Nino either so We'll see how it goes. Let's not panic. Um, we lost. We lost a friendly to Dortmund. Um, there were some positives, but there were some glaring negatives. The goalkeeper, obviously, being the biggest one, um, and Matip's injury, of course, as well. Uh, other things to pick up on in the first half. I didn't think the Lana had his best game. I thought he was a bit off the pace a little bit. Um, it was a big pitch, so you know, I'd have thought he would have been able to find some space and create some chances. But it wasn't to be. Curtis Jones showed some good touches, but again, I, I just think that there, there wasn't much fluidity in the first half from for me the side to be honest. I mean, we we go in one and up through that through that Robertson uh, cross and Van Dyke header, which is you know these things happen from set pieces. But um, second half when the game really opened up and we didn't have the quality on display to be able to you know double our lead event in, in the in a way that we should have for Shea Ojo. I think Sturridge did all he could, Cater did all he could. Um, they were again the standouts, but Liverpool lose the game. We go from there. It's Man City on Wednesday. I mean, they lost to Dortmund the other day as well. Um, so we face them in New Jersey, a game, as I say, I'll be at. So I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram, A, to see content from that, and B, for a chance to win any Liverpool shirt of your choice. I'm giving it away on Monday night. Um, so follow me on Instagram to see my latest post and see how you can enter. And then you're going to need to be following me on Snapchat to find out the winner. So make sure you're following me on all those platforms. Ben might say in all of those. Subscribe to this channel if you're new for more content. And I'll see you next time.